Hi, everybody. Um, as Kehon introduced me, my name is Janina Bensky. I'm going to share now my presentation. Can you see it okay? Yes. Great. So I'm going to talk now about the status of IP address request. Um, we're going to see how to request for IP addresses, IPv4, IPv6, also ASNs, also how to request for transfers. Uh, we will explain something about the IPv4 waiting list. And also we will share some information that we have available courses in our campus. So some background about the history of internet, as you may all know, uh, internet was born in 1983 with IPv4. That meant uh, about 4 million, uh, 4,000 million more than that uh, IPv4 addresses. Uh, then um, the, the I, IETF started to notice that uh, IPv4 was going to, to be exhausted. So they created IPv6 in 1988, 1998. Uh, if we, uh, IPv6 uh, has more than 346 million addresses, IP addresses. So we consider that would be uh, enough for many, many years. Um, but if we start thinking about that, uh, we think like IPv6 is new, but internet actually live 15 years without IPv6 and 23 with V6. So more years with V6. Um, the thing is it's going really slow to implement. Uh, many organizations, as you also may know, started to uh, do actions in order to promote IPv6. Like in 2014, LACNI did uh, a tour in many countries in order to help and promote this. And we're uh, every day we're doing activities in order to promote and with, to help with IPv6. So let's go to how to request IPv6. Uh, you, you have different requirements if you are an ISP, an internet service provider or an end user. Um, for example, if you are an ISP, uh, the minimum as assignment we usually give is a prefix slash 32, but if you need more, you can ask for, for more also. Uh, you have to be legally established in our, in our region, and we'll ask you for documentation of your plan uh, about how you are going to use the IPv6 block and also comment uh, how you're going to, in, to, con to connect uh, uh, th that block uh, for with, uh, with which ASN you are going to announce it and also to compromise that you're going to use it uh, in no longer than 12 months. Uh, also, you will have to offer IPv6 services to your clients in no longer than 24 months. Then uh, the requirements for end users uh, uh, the minimum assignment is slash 48, but also as with a, a, a ISPs, you can also ask for more. You also have to be legally established in our region and you will have to announce uh, the block um, with a minimum uh, possible level of dis disaggregation. Also, we will ask you to provide detailed information showing how you're going to use that block and uh, submit the description of your network uh, topo topology. And uh, the idea is that you at least explain how you're going to use that IPv6 block. Then uh, how to, let's go to a practical stuff. Uh, in order to submit a request, you have to log in to mylagnic.lagnic.net with your user ID and password. If you don't have anyone, you can go here to create a new one and you just uh, complete your personal information and you create a user ID in my LACNIC. Then uh, you have to create a new organization. If you don't have one, you just also have to 
uh, complete the information about the organization and you create a new one. And here it will appear the organization and you just go to uh, request here, request IP addresses and ASNs. Then uh, it depends if you want to, to submit an IP before uh, request or IPv6 or ASNs. Uh, you just click on, on the one you want to submit. Well, if you submit IPv4, we will explain more a, a bit later, but we are in phase three of IPv4 ex exhaustion. So we have a, a, an, a waiting list. If you request for IPv4, I will talk about this later and explain more. And this is the pop-up that appears just to inform that. Uh, then you just click where how many IPv4, IPv4 blocks you want to, to, to request, uh, then the IPv6 and then the ASNs. And then you just click if you are requesting as an end user or as an ISP. Then uh, if you requested for IPv4, uh, I will explain later, later, but because of we are in phase three, just new organizations can request for IPv4. So if you don't have IPv4, you can request. If you already have, you cannot request more. Uh, and also you must uh, have been assigned IPv6 in order to request for IPv4. Or if not, you can request both uh, and then um, uh, you can submit the, the request. There you have to complete the information about your IPv4 request the number of clients you have, uh, each type you can complete here, and also uh, how you're going to use it in the next 12 months. Then the information about V6, you have to complete the information about the plan, uh, and then uh, the information about the ASN. If, if you, all this is, is, it is if you requested for the free resources. If not, it will ask you just about the resource that you requested. And then you go to additional information. Uh, any additional information is useful for us when we analyze the request, like how are you interconnected? If you have any IP addresses as assigned directly by your provider, well, anything you can provide is really useful for the analysis. After that, you click on finish and you re will receive an email uh, uh, that an analyst will contact you and will follow up your request. They will uh, start asking questions uh, to you in order to, um, to know if you are, uh, you are uh, accomplishing all, all the requirements. And after that, the request will be approved if, if everything is okay. Uh, and then you will have to pay uh, in order to become a Blacklink member to send an agreement and then we will assign you the resources. Well, let, let's, let's talk about now about IPv4 exhaustion. I mentioned something before. The thing is that now we are in phase three. Uh, in last year, in August, uh, Lagnik reached um, uh, that, that phase because the pool of IPv4 addresses was exhausted. So now in this phase, we are only, um, we are only uh, assigned recovered and returned addresses. The thing is that the number of recovered and returned blocks is dynamic. We cannot know how many uh, IPv4 addresses we will recover uh, in the next month. And uh, well, when we recover, then we, uh, th those blocks, uh, then we will assign those to the organizations uh, that will be in a waiting list. Uh, we can only make assignments in this phase from slash 22 to slash 24. And as I, and as I already said before, only new members who have IPv6 assigned uh, may only receive the initial assignment. So you can only receive IPv4 if you don't have. About the waiting list, uh, as I said also, an uh, organization must uh, have been assigned IPv6 in order to be in the IPv4 waiting list. 
and the IPv4 blocks assigned in this phase have been under quarantine. So, so when we uh, recover a block, we leave that block in quarantine for six months in order like to clean it, you know, so that block won't be uh, announced anymore. And when we will assign it after, assign it after the six months, it will be um, like more clean, you know. Uh, also uh, near the date, how this works. So you uh, enter the IPv4 waiting list if you don't have any blocks from Lagnik and also if you have an IPv6 assigned. So you enter the waiting list and uh, near the, the, the date on which the quarantine blocks are to be released, the requests which are at the top of the waiting list will be analyzed. So then uh, at that time, if you are on the top of the list, we will contact you and we will start with the analysis. The thing is now we have uh, about 682 requests in the waiting list, it's a long list. So we estimated because many organizations ask us like, I'm in the waiting list when I'm going to, to receive my blog. Uh, as we said, the, the recover, uh, the number of blocks recover is dynamic, so we cannot know. We can also make an estimation based on the historic um, information, like how many blocks we have recovered in the past months. And based on that, we calculated that the, that the last request on the top of the list will receive now in November 2023. As I say, this is, this is not exact, exact date and it may vary. Uh, as, as it is uh, estimated based on of the information. Well, that's about IPv4. As, as, as I said, it's, it's really hard uh, and will take a long time. But the other option, if you need IPv4, well, the best option, as I will talk then, is uh, to request, of course, IPv6. We have uh, many available space in IPv6 to assign. But if you need IPv4, the options is the, the transfer. Uh, so I'm going to explain you how to request an IPv4 transfer. So you also have to log into uh, mylagnic.lagnic.net. Uh, after that, you, you go to this, um, to this section, you click on IP ASN resources, you click on transfer return. Then you will have many options because there are different types of transfer. Uh, so you will have to click on the one, on the one uh, which adapt to your uh, necessity. So the first one is a transfer due to merger, acquisition, reorganization, or the relocation. Uh, also, if you need to request a legal uh, that your organization has changed the legal name you click here uh, this is the most common the transfer of uh, resources to another organization uh, and you have to see that here we have if the transfer is within the region and also if it is from another region uh, we have uh, implemented inter rir transfers uh, last year so you can also transfer resources from LACNIC to other region, um, to ARIN, to RIPE, and to APENIC. AFRINIC is the only one which still uh, doesn't allow inter IR transfer. But if it is uh, within the region, you just click here. If it is uh, from or to another region, you will click, click here. So then after that, I will make the, the most common example here that is a, a within the region. So you will have to complete the, the information about the offering organization. It is important that the one who will submit the request is the offering organization. So they will have to log into MyLagnic. They will put the information uh, of their organization, who is the legal representative, also the blocks they want to transfer, um, then they will click next. And they will have to put also the information about the receiving organization, all the information about them. Uh, and then any additional information is also uh, very, very useful. After that, you will 
receive an email like with the IP before uh, an IP receive D6 uh, request, you will receive an email and um, one of our analysts will contact you and uh, we will start also with the, with the analysis. So we will uh, first make the analysis to the offering organization. Once uh, we check everything, it's okay. We'll, we will contact, LACNIC will contact the receiving organization and we will make the analysis uh, with them. Uh, after that part is also approved, then we will uh, start with the, we will execute the, the trans. Well, so the other option, as I said, uh, is V6. Uh, it's, it's easy to request with V6. You can, we can, uh, we can assign you V6 very easily, as I explained before, how to complete the request. Uh, and we also offer uh, in our campus, and uh, if you're not aware of LACNIC campus, it's really useful. And we also have, uh, well, courses in Spanish, but we also have one course in English that it's uh, this one, Introduction to IPv6. Uh, this course is in, in English, and uh, I really recommend it in, to organizations who are starting with V6. Uh, to, you just go to campus.lagnic.net and you will see that and there's the information when this course starts. We usually give it, I think it's twice a, a year, something like that. So go to our website and check on that. It's really useful. So just to sum up, sum up what have we seen? Uh, how to request for IP addresses, ASN, transfers, uh, some basic information about IPv4 waiting list. And I also uh, share with you some useful information about IPv6 course in Langley campus. Well, I guess that would be all from my part. Um, please, if you have any questions, uh, I'm here to answer them. Thank okay. you. I I have a quick question regarding um, transfers. Uh, what are the time limits with respect to, I know it takes time for you to get your, to arrange your transfer from say Arin to or right to, to LACNIC. What are the time limits and the costs involved normally with, 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 the, with the actual transfer itself? This is separate and apart from, from buying them and they're crazy expensive at the moment last time I checked. And then the second question is, because we're, we have such small entities in Belize, what is the smallest size of IPv6, IPv4? Um, and is there any special considerations for like EDU and other, other sort of special entities, um, NGOs, stuff like that? Yes, thank you, Etienne, for your question. Well, first, the first question um, is uh, how, uh, let me check if, uh, confirm me, me if I understood well, like, what, which are the costs and how how long does it take uh, a transfer? Is it okay, the question? Yes. Okay, so the first, the, the time it takes, it really depends because we are all the time interacting with the organization and it really depends on how fast the other organization answers. Because like we ask questions, like we have um, like objective to answer within 48 hours, something like that, I can give you that, but I cannot give you any reference when the other organi organization uh, can answer. And also it depends on the information they send me if it is correct or not, because like I ask them, okay, give me a document showing legal representation of your organization in order to check that it is in our region. Sometimes some organizations send me documentation proving that perfectly and check. So we continue. Sometimes some organizations don't send me the correct information and I have to ask them again. And then th that usually takes longer. But what I can tell you is like, we have to just check uh, the, that the offering organization is uh, actually the one uh, who is making the transfer. We check that uh, if it is within the region, then we contact the receiving organization and we ask them to justify that the block they are going to receive, um, well, they, it, it, is, it is going to be used. And then we make, uh, we make them sign, you know, the, well, they have to pay and we make them sign a transfer agreement and both parts have to sign it. And that has to be sent 
uh, also physic be signed uh, by by hand, and also it, that document has to be sent to our our to LACNIC offices physically. That usually takes more time. Uh, so that are the steps uh, they have to follow. And uh, I cannot give you an exact date because it really, really varies uh, with each case. Uh, also, that's about the length, about the cost. Well, uh, for intra within the region, for blocks which are um, from slash 24 to slash uh, 19, uh, the, the, the cost is $1,000. And for, for blocks which are um, uh, bigger than slash 19, the, the cost is $1,500. I hope to have answered that question. Uh, and the, if not, please tell me. And the other question, can you remind me, please? Sure. The other question was around um, what are the smallest, it's, it's two pieces actually. Uh, what is the smallest um, block that is assigned to, uh, I guess, micro? Because most of the entities here who, um, most of the operators who are larger operators already have IPs and can't get any more IPv4s. So, um, and we already know the situation with IPv4, but in terms of if, if someone applied today, you know, and I'm talking not only ISPs, but maybe large enterprise, um, uh, you already said all they can get is IPv6 and ASN. So what is this, what are those blocks that are allocated to the small entities? The other question was, and the, and the cost related. And the other question is, um, is there any special provisions for like NGOs or universities, stuff like that? And last but not least, and the reason why you reminded me was, um, uh, we, we have a situation in Belize, I believe is not very unique to Belize where we have quite a number of LACNIC um, members who have never been in Belize only operate a paper office at a, at, a, at a lawyer's office, but yet have massive resources compared to the providers in Belize that no longer can get an IPv4. I know it's something that, that um, LACNIC have been working on to, and it's part of the verification process now, but is there any, any policy to say, hey, these blocks originate, need to originate BGP-wise within your country or within your region, as opposed to just saying you have a legal entity that exists in Belize and I can be in China and apply for them and get them and then use them wherever I want, as is the case at the moment. Right, yeah, thank you, Etienne, for clarifying that questions. Well, first of all, uh, about the minimal assignment, um, well, it, uh, for ISPs, the minimal assignment is slash 32, and for uh, end user is slash 48. Uh, here in our website, uh, I can share with you here on the chat, it's all the information about the, the prices. If you are, uh, it, it depends, we have categories and it depends uh, how many, like the, the, the size of the blog. So it's, it depends on the category you will be and the price you will pay. Now I will share with you here the, the link and you can see all, all the information here. Um, also, the other question was, well, the cost that ah, about, yeah, organizations created in Belize, uh, which are in other countries. What you, we usually ask is um, legal uh, document, document, documentation proving that they are legally established in Belize. Uh, that's what we ask. And also we ask like to which internet providers they are interconnected. Maybe over there we can see something. Um, and also like the clients, uh, when they show us like uh, which clients they have, sometimes they show us statistics. Uh, also, we, we can see um, uh, like, well, I said already, like to which uh, internet providers they interconnect. Uh, like those are the typical stuff we see. Like we, are, we cannot be controlling, like after we assign, uh, like, I don't know, Two months month later, we cannot control all the time like what they do if it change on our read uh, another country. But uh, if we receive like uh, some uh, like someone who complains about it, we can make a an investigation about that. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. If not, please tell me.
Hi, Janina. This is yeah. Kevin. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Janina. You're welcome. Thank you for that question, Etienne. I also note that Oscar has indicated that he is also available to make a comment on that very question. So I'd like to uh, give the floor to Oscar to add to what Janina had said. Thanks, Kevin. Um, just a short um, comment because Janina pretty much addressed the, 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 the question. It's as Janina said, um, uh, there is a, a policy that it is not, remember, it is not made by us, the, the LACNIC staff, but uh, by you, the community, that says that the uh, addresses can be used outside the region, but uh, it must be used uh, mostly in a region. So the, there's a requirement to have the majority of the addresses used, the space used in our region, but there is no restriction to use a part of the, those addresses outside uh, the region. So uh, that, that is one point. And the other one is, as uh, Janina said, if you believe someone uh, is um, uh, um, violating the, uh, the LACNIC policies, just let us know. Uh, please uh, provide us as much documentation as possible. We will uh, follow up that that case, we've done that in the past, actually with uh, uh, a few organizations in Belize, and we, ha we have uh, followed the, 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 the cases. Some cases we have found that uh, there, there are no um, uh, violation of the, of the policies, uh, but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that we cannot go back again and, and, and see uh, other organizations or other blocks uh, that are uh, being at, um, assigned to a Belizean community. The, the, the main goal of, of LACNIC is that the addresses that are part of our internet space to be used in the region, uh, mostly in our region. If those are just keep uh, separated, looking for a nice uh, buyer of uh, address space, that is not something that we would like to see. Thanks, thanks very much for that support, Oscar. Thank you very much, Janina, and thank you, Oscar, for that enlightenment on the question that was asked. 